And obviously, uh, our stream itself is not running at 4K, um, but for now, we do have builds running internally with the target of running at 4K with the goal of supporting potentially higher down the road. So Max, while he's loading into the cinematic, I guess we're going to talk over it. So if this is your first time ever seeing the tip of the spear cinematic, I apologize. Probably not the best way to experience it. Um, but we also want to cover a lot today while we're here. So. I thought maybe it'd be interesting, Max, just to kind of recap some of the language that you shared with us in the last month's blog about specifically the couple of PC pillars and sort of how do you and the team think about this product and kind of what are your goals when it comes to bringing all this Halo content to PC for the first time? Yeah, so when we think about PC pillars, uh, we think about PC pillars as delivering a PC native game as measured by PC game players. So we want to make sure that the game feels like something that was natively released on the platform. It has the controls and options and settings, uh, things that, that people expect out of PC games. So uh, there's a lot of work that we're doing specifically around you know, how, getting the mouse feel to be right, you know, making sure that we have the right mouse settings, you know, uh, remappable keys. Uh, I think, as you mentioned, there's some other you know settings in there that we're looking at in terms of one of the biggest pieces of feedback we got is that you need a you know a field of view slider, right? So something that lets you basically tweak what's there from the defaults, um, you know, and that's an interesting challenge in of itself because again, a lot of these games uh, they kind of had a fixed set of settings. So figuring that out and making that work really well on PC, um, you know, it's being able to support uh, multiple resolutions, you know, variable frame rate. Um, just basically a lot of those those kinds of options, you know, that, that feed into that pillar, um, and uh, and just making sure that if, you know if you played this game, you wouldn't necessarily know that it had started out as a console game, like it would feel like something that was there um, as a, as a PC experience yeah, from the game. For sure, and I know the blog I mentioned earlier that will come out later, uh, post some sat down with Scoops and Andrew, and did a pretty interesting technical discussion around the challenges, specifically with things like FOV slider, yep. where yeah. These games were built with a certain FOV. Generally, back in the day, I think it was a trade-off between design goals and then performance, right? Because yeah. mm -hmm. the more you're rendering, the more it'll, it'll strain the hardware. So that's not so much a problem in the world of PC, where you could scale up to these most these bleeding-edge machines. But it does mean a lot of the content wasn't authored to necessarily look great when you start to, to expand that field of view. So I think Tyler even has some screenshots of some of the examples that the team's having to work through right now, like what happens when you crank that all the way up and yeah. you start to see through your arm and your weapons start to skew. So yeah. interesting challenges there to work through, I think, from engineering and just on the content side. Like how do we how do we solve for that? And I think you guys are willing to if somebody wants to knowingly say, I'm okay with this looking weird, I want to go extreme, maybe that's fine, right? Yeah, I think we want to give people choices. Um, and I think also this is another area where we're really looking forward to the flighting feedback in particular around how that plays out in the multiplayer space, right? So, you know, again, like you mentioned, the content wasn't necessarily authored for wider FOVs. So as we think about it, how does that impact the way that the levels play and things like that? So there's, um, there's definitely scenarios where we want to give people the power to do you know what they want with that and be okay with those results and then we also have to think about how it impacts the competitive environment as well so a lot to think about there looks like Twi uh, mixer chat's pretty excited so far with your playthrough here uh ferdinand you're doing a good job that's surprising um i'm glad uh, <laughs> people think it, it looks great i agree i mean it's easy for me to say this but i i can't even it does look good here but i'm telling you on a on a nice monitor that supports hdr 4K. This is you would never know this game came out years ago. It, it, it I think it aged tremendously well. And in fact, um, I really can't wait for some of my friends that worked on the original Reach to see what their new baby looks like with this fresh coat of paint. Just a testament, I think, to how great the source material was in the first place. Some great art direction here. So as Ferdinand goes through, oh! uh, let me take a look at my notes here and see what else we might want to make sure we get to. We do want to talk about the. Um, Progression system here in just a minute, Max. But that, that might be like a, a little bit of a beefier conversation, so we might hold off on that slightly. Um, let's see. We talked about our PC pillars. I have seen some questions in the chat already popping up about matchmaking settings, yeah. uh, which is covered in the May Update blog, thanks to Dana, otherwise known as uh, the Duck. Psycho Duck. Psycho Duck. Uh, DuckTales, as his sections now come to be known. But... Um, <laughs> One question we get a lot, Max, is what settings will we look forward to using in matchmaking? And I think we're, we're able to go ahead and put that to bed, right? Yeah, so I, I think that we've uh, gotten a good amount of feedback in terms of where you know, people feel the settings should be. And there's kind of 
the retail settings that came out at launch, and then there was the title update that came out much later in the life cycle, which you know reduced bloom and had a number of other changes um, for multiplayer. And uh, we think both from what we've heard externally and internally, um, we you know we feel the TU settings are the ones to use for matchmaking. Um, and interestingly, I think the the thing about all of these settings is that. Uh, the, the bigger question is where else you know would we would we like to think about them and I certainly think the competitive space is the one where we want to think about it and I think there's other questions of you know um, does it make sense in the other modes and you know customs and things like that so I think we're going to continue to look into uh, feedback from folks about uh, where else they'd like to see it yeah so but I did hear you confirm that we will use the TU settings yep. for, for all of MCC social matchmaking um, and our ranked matchmaking as well, but then we're looking at probably not using those, for example, in some of the other modes of play. Right. Correct. Right. Okay. Cool. So there's and there's some specific choices, like I believe Invasion, you know, has some specific considerations yep. for the the title updates. But like you said, that. once I think flighting will certainly be a great way for us to get more feedback and validate some of these decisions that we've made, and then of course over time, uh, I would expect, just like. MCC today, uh, MCC on PC will also continue to go and evolve based on fan feedback as well. So let's check in on Ferdinand. How goes it, Ferdinand? This is fun. Yeah? I'm enjoying <laughs> myself. Just having a nice leisurely drive. Yeah, companion. why not? I'm so used to trying to speed through this mission through testing that actually being able to sightsee a little bit is a um, nice refreshing way to play this. Just to address questions that I've seen in the chat a lot, this build for E3 does not have an FOV slider enabled and working. Right. So we do have that in the internal build. That's not in scope for what we've cut out to bring to E3. So a lot of people keep saying, change the FOV, change the FOV. Mm. I think a few eagle-eyed people noticed that even some of our game screenshots that we showed uh, last month in the blog did have FOVs of, of varying uh, distances that were being used downstairs in our playtest lab. Um, I see a lot of questions popping up about customization, Max, so maybe that would be a good chance for us to uh, take a step back and talk a little bit about that. And this is, uh, this is something that I, I only recently, with all the information you provided to Tyler for this May Update blog, do I finally kind of wrap my head around what it means to bring a new progression system to MCC starting with Halo Reach. So, I don't know how you want to unpack all that, <laughs> but uh, imagine that we Boy. know almost nothing. Yeah. Um, Again, to reiterate, in the blog comes out later today, we'll have some screenshots. Max provided a video that's a concept of kind of how some of these elements might look and, and work in the game. Of course, all could change over time. This is still a work in progress. So more information later, but we have Max here right now in person. So um, what would you like to say? What would you like us to kind of wrap our heads around and what we should expect for this new system that's coming to MCC? Yeah, so there's a lot to, like you said, a lot to unpack, a lot to dig into there. And I think philosophically when MCC came out, um, you know, we really leaned hard into uh, a Halo 2-like, you know, skill ranking system and customization, and philosophically from a customization standpoint, there was a notion of, you know, these games had been out before, so we wanted to make sure that a lot of the armor was accessible, right? Um, and we also had a lot of data that supported at the time for the different titles with the way the armor pieces matched that they worked, but, you know, people preferred them in complete sets. Uh, over time, we've gotten a bit of feedback in terms of how people think about customization. And one of our big requests has been, can we get the kind of the per piece, you know, armor customization in there? Uh, and that was always an important goal for us um, as we thought about bringing reach in, basically. And you know, in addition to that, thinking around the whole scaffolding of the progression system, right? And how we think about not just the skill ranking piece, but also just you know, how do you reward? Uh, good play, you know, how do you reward the time investment, um, you know, the play across different modes, um, you know, social modes and things like that too. And so we really wanted to come back to a system that effectively was, was you know, encompassed a larger scope of the game like Reach did when it had its progression system. And then taking some of that and bringing in more modern kind of metagame elements, right? So thinking in terms of, you know, a lot of things that we've seen more recently in terms of seasons, right? or the ability, for example, to have unlocks that can come in um, tiered with a way for you to spend you know, a seasonal currency effectively to, to get those unlocks. And so, uh, and we also heard that you know, even while people appreciated that they could play all these cool armors in MCC, they also liked having armors to effectively chase after. So it's really taking those reach armors and wrapping it up in this all-encompassing progression system um, and you know, giving people some different goals, and then also uh, just giving a, another framework for how we can help people 
uh, to learn how to play because we also don't want people to just come into games and, and to just assume that it's all about getting the most kills, right? There's a lot of nuance to the game, so it's it's really packing together a lot of different pieces there. Let me see. Let's 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 take take a step back because I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of reactions in Mixer chat. Season pass. Oh no. Um, to be clear, this is not something that you're buying into, right? It's That's just right. it's just part of the game. Yep. So. I think uh, it'll be easier to wrap your head around when you see some of the visual examples that we have in the blog coming out this afternoon, but imagine this is just like a meta layer that's taking all the great unlockables that Reach already has and just kind of bringing them up a level, I think is yep. one way to think about it. And then imagine a similar system being applied to the rest of the games that come into MCC over time as well. And by season, we are kind of ref we use that to refer to the time kind of between the individual game launches. So remember, each of the games in MCC is going to roll out on PC over time, kind of when they're ready. So when Reach launches, that's effectively Season 1, and I don't believe Season 2 would then start once Halo CE comes out, more or less, right? Yeah, I think the exact timing and content of the season is something we'll figure out. So okay. Reach is definitely Season 1, um, but the I, general idea is that you know the content for a season. Sorry, is I just saw. That I, was, I yeah. just saw a lot of F's. That was a good chat. one. It's, wow. uh, Ferdinand, you finally you finally took one. Sorry, man. Well, I am playing on on legendary. So oh, really? As everybody can tell. I thought you were on easy. What? Uh, I really wish one of your uh, man. How sick would it be if one of your if one of your AI uh, partners was actually me? <laughs> that would be so cool. That was actually a small flashback when I was playing with my son when he was younger. Uh, he got into Reach for a bit. And he actually had a sketch show up as one of his teammates. It was pretty. His, mind, his mind was blown. I can't remember what, what rank I was though. They probably gave me private, to be honest. <laughs> I'm looking at your first lieutenant, Paul Bertone. He was uh, one of the design directors uh, from Bungie on Halo Reach. So sorry, Max. Back yeah. to your. Uh, don't die for a name. We'll I'm trying my best. A very complex. You see my health about season pass. You see my health. You need to use that debug console cheat command. What are you uh, talking? You're what? missing that. I don't know what you're talking about. So the seasons. <laughs> might flux a little bit, but in general, is it safe for me to think about a season sort of mapping to each of the specific titles and kind of the content therein as it will progress over time? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Each cool. season definitely has a theme. It is themed around a game, um, you know, and, and the content that you unlock, same same kind of deal, right? Yeah. The content could be, you know, in the case of Reach, obviously there's a lot of armors there, um, but it could be nameplates. You know, in the past, like we've had these these events, right, yep. for um, MCC, where we've awarded nameplates, and those have been popular. And we've never really had a mechanism for packaging that up effectively, as you know, and surfacing that better. So that's that's a whole another reason why we're looking into this kind of system. Another thing I've seen some questions coming up in chat. People are asking, will a lot of the Reach kind of pre-order armors or armors that were historically only you could only get through like the Waypoint app? There was there was a handful of content that was tied to doing things out of the game, right? So um, my understanding is that we can look forward to all that content coming back into Reach, right? Yeah, we are looking into basically as many ways as we can to get in all of the content that we can, um, and you know that we're even looking into stuff that you know we're like maybe there was something else we can find there. So, um, but definitely like our goal is to offer a wide variety of armors, and you know again centralize the way you can earn them. Yep. Another thing I'm seeing a lot of questions on, which I think we touched on back in the day, but um, because it's been since March and things are moving quickly, uh, people are asking, will their existing reach status, rank, unlocks, will any of that carry over to reach once it arrives on, in MCC? Yeah, so there's, just like with the other titles, there's really no connection effectively between kind of the legacy titles effectively and, and the you know Master Chief Collection um, progression systems. Um, and we... It, they're just built for kind of different audiences and, and different platforms there. So um, yeah, so that's how we think about it. People are yelling that no one asked that. I, I've seen dozens of people ask, will my will my <laughs> unlocks and my rank carry over? Okay, another question we're seeing a lot of, which this one we have spoken to in the past, split screen. We know it's a big question right now. Uh, my understanding of kind of where the team's head is at is that it's not something that we're able to commit to for launch, but it's definitely something that the team is going to be looking into. And I think... I mean, I'll just say personally, I've been very surprised at the amount of demand and expectation there is for a split screen on PC. Um, I, I'll just admit, I'm kind of naive, I guess, in the PC space. I play PC games, but I've never played a split screen game on PC. But I think as more and more PC gamers play on their living rooms and on their TVs, um, split screen, we know it's something that PC gamers now also want, and it's a part of the, of the franchise and the legacy of these titles. So I know it's top of mind for Greg and Andrew and the engineering team. 
um, that I don't think it's something we can comfortably commit to having there at launch. Yeah, and I think that some of the things people don't necessarily appreciate on the PC world for the complexities of split screen is also just respect to, like, for example, how do multiple users sign in on a PC? Yeah. Um, you know, and how do you handle that? Um, how do you handle progression with those multiple users, right? Like, even think about Steam, for example. Like, you know, do you have multiple users logged into Steam? So there's, there's a lot of interesting things that once you dig and peel the layers back a little bit, you realize... There's a lot to think. Yeah, through. it's complicated, right? Um, now, split screen on console, I assume, is 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 a thing, right? Since yeah. the original game had yeah. it. So, we are talking a lot about Reach on PC, but as a reminder, Halo Reach is also coming to MCC on Xbox One, and if you have an Xbox One X, it also still supports HDR, and it'll look amazing in 4K 60. So, uh, we were talking about that before the stream today. At some point, a little closer when we're ready to launch, um, we'll do a much more robust deep dive specifically into the Xbox version. Um, there's a lot of goodness there. Um, I think in some ways that builds probably a little further along just because it doesn't have, for example, you don't have to re redo the entire UI and switch everything to keyboard, for example. So we'll do more talking about the console version um, in the road ahead, but don't forget that Reach will be coming to Xbox One as well. Um, Ferdinand. Yes, sir. How goes it? Oh, it's going good. I guess it's I a haven't good thing died the again. 10 minute timer isn't turned on, huh? No. You would be yeah. nowhere near finishing this mission in 10 minutes. I'm uh, deliberately taking my time. Um, I'm seeing a lot of questions about mod support as well. Um, we have talked about that briefly uh, to date when we've discussed this project. Um, I think, again, mod support has always been something that the team knows is important for PC gaming, and I think for the Looking way down the road, I think we've all had this vision that ultimately imagine a world where kind of the community eventually just takes ownership of this entire experience and it just becomes something totally different, right? Like, I think that'd be the dream. Yeah, I think um, so. To what extent we have official mod support in at launch, I think is going to probably vary by title at a minimum. I think that's safe to say because I think the different, of all the games in MCC, I think some are going to be maybe a little easier and more suited than others, depending on the tools that, that power them. Um, so modding is top of mind. I think where it nets out in terms of what's available at launch and how it grows over time, that's all still kind of being worked through. I wouldn't say it's, it's a definite pry one for launch. Um, we've also talked openly about the fact that we have a group of community members that we've been talking to for some time now that we look to partner with them as representatives of the mod community. We have people that work across the community on a number of fan-made Halo projects, including a couple folks that were part of the El Dorito project. So, um, we have a lot of great, passionate people giving us information and insight and suggestions and feedback on how we should be thinking about mods. So it's definitely on the list, it's top of mind, but it's unclear to what extent that's going to be available uh, by the time we launch. Let's see, what else do we have here in the chat? I see a bunch of questions around mouse input and questions around raw mouse input. Yes, there is raw mouse input support, and there's also options for um, mouse acceleration. So when we talk about uh, mouse settings, that's something we're looking into in terms of the variety of options that, that people would like to support. See also questions around frame rate and you know, 144 hertz, 240 hertz, 240 hertz. Um, same kinds of things. It's like as we look at uncapped frame rate, there's a lot of work to figure out there, but we're looking to support as much as we can. Yep. Uh, Crossplay is popping up a few times. That's something else that we, we've touched on a couple times over the past few months. and. Um, so cross progression is something that will be in from from the beginning, yep. right? So if you already have content in MTC unlocked on console, that content will be there, or your progression, what what have you, would all carry over to PC and vice versa. Um, I believe we we're not committing to a cross play experience for launch, but the engineering team is making sure that they're doing the diligence now. So if fan feedback, for example, warrants later that that's something that's very important uh, for PC and or Xbox players, we at least want to have the option to be able to enable that without having to rip the whole thing apart again. So not something that's part of the plan record for launch, but it's something that we are going to monitor very, very closely and we'll have the opportunity to enable if it deems itself necessary. Yeah, there were questions around, I mean, I think you just answered it, but the questions around, does the progression system also apply to Xbox? And yes, it's, it will, right? it's, it is the progression system. Yep. right? So. so that means, yes, there will be some interesting updates coming to the base game uh, on Xbox as well. And I, you know, I forgot to mention this as well when you talked about the progression system. I mentioned at the start of the show we have 11 engines now running inside of MCC, which is pretty crazy to me, and I had to make Postums give me a list of what they really <laughs> are. but. 
We're actually adding, uh, so I guess MCC today technically has nine, correct? Um, and we are adding two more. Mm -hmm. So Halo Reach, obviously, is yeah. the game. And then we're also adding an additional layer. And this one's a little tricky, but we want to talk about it because eventually when fighting starts, probably some people will discover and say, this is weird. Why is there some indication that Unreal has something to do with MCC? Um, and to be really clear, I think when you're building something like a progression system, overhauling the entire UI, there's a lot of systems in MCC that just haven't aged very well and or I don't think are scalable to meet the needs of what you guys want to deliver with a modern yep. PC experience. So to that end, the 11th engine being added to MCC is this layer of the Unreal Engine that is specifically being used as a wrapper to build out a new holistic UI across the game. It's, it's actually a component of the UI, so it's, okay. it's, we'll be very clear, it's a very small subset of what we're using. Okay. Um, and it's specifically to address the issues that people brought up around armor customization was really our starting point. Okay. So, uh, because we just, with the existing things that we had in there, we didn't feel like we can uh, show the armors in a way in the UI to look good. So we needed a solution for a 3D armor. And just to be super clear, that is not to, that's nothing to do with the games themselves. It's, it's just to power a component of the UI and things like the progression system and being able to view your armor unlocks and your models. So zero impact to the game engines themselves and the way the games look and feel and play. None of that has anything to do with the Unreal uh, layer that's being added in. But wanted to provide that context so when word somehow gets out that MCC has become an Unreal game, not true. I've seen questions too about the specs and requirements. Um, I know we've talked at a high level, like certainly our goal would be to be able to accommodate really high-end experiences on high-end PCs, but also try to make the bar as low as possible so there's a minimal barrier of entry to experience these games. Correct? Right. Uh, right now we're working on Windows 7 min spec. Um, we are in the process of getting that working, but we're not 100% there yet. Uh, through that, we're also exploring what our hardware min spec is going to be too. Uh, we have some external teams that actually assist us with doing that, some test teams, that their entire goal is to run our game on every piece of hardware that's available on the market right now and give us feedback on how it's performing for certain setups. Okay. Uh, so we're currently in the process of running those right now and we're ingesting the feedback and that'll help us better build our min spec going forward. And I think it's also safe to say that flighting will also be a very valuable resource for us, right? Because yes. when people opt into the Halo Insider program, one of the requirements if you want to flight on PC is to upload your DX diag info right so I imagine the team will try to look across a lot of those different factors one of them yep. being let's make sure we have a wide range of hardware profiles yep. right different graphics cards different CPUs all of that and then that data will also help inform are we hitting the right experiential bars for the right sort of distribution of hardware? Uh, our hope is that at least some of the flighting that's going to be done is going to be specifically based on the hardware and not just the area of focus, like uh, people that only play Reach. Uh, I think more than that, we want to see how it's going to perform on in the real world hardware. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to test things in a controlled environment, but when people start getting their hands on this stuff and playing it on their machines, that's when you start seeing all the fun stuff happening. So a lot of questions I see in the chat now about anti-cheat, mm -hmm. and I think that's, I do know um, we have talked some about, I believe that's actually one of our key features for the next month's blog, so I don't think we can get into a ton of detail, but suffice it to say, super important, oh, top yeah, of mind, sure. uh, an anti-cheat solution and overall security are things that are kind of new on PC versus the console close ecosystem. So. Our engineering teams are, uh, this is top of mind for them and something that they're going to be paying close attention to. And we hope to be able to kind of give more information about the implementation and what that means um, a little bit closer uh, to launch down the road. What else are we looking at here? Release date, release date, that's easy. It's just ready when it's ready, right? So the first step is getting uh, flighting up and running, getting this into the hand of players, and then systematically scaling that up and making sure that we're hitting each of our goals and checkpoints along the way. Once all that happens and Eric and the test team have come to the same conclusion internally, um, then I think we're pretty close to uh, pushing this thing out in the retail world. And then we almost start over again and now work on Halo CE and we, we're back to square one, kind of, right? I, that isn't totally <laughs> fair to say that, right? Because I have seen some fans speculating that if it's taking, quote, this long just for reach, if you now s extrapolate that out. But it is safe to say there's a lot of foundational core work that has been done as part of Reach being the first title 
that does carry forward to the subsequent releases, right? Yes. So we're not actually starting from scratch with each new title. No, yeah. and and there's work that's going on uh, for future stuff as well. Uh, it's not nearly as far along as the Reach stuff. I mean, you see it being played right here. It looks absolutely fantastic. Um, but there's multiple people working in tandem to get different parts of the project up and running. Yeah, so it's... Uh, but just getting over the hump has been a pretty huge accomplishment, right? Yep. And um, like we talked about at the outset, learning what it means to provision builds and secure them and strip out content and be able to push them to a whitelist group of users on Steam, kind of a foreign concept to us in some regards, at least on PC, mm -hmm. right? Until we started this work. Um, We're still year. learning about the different requirements for code signing before we can get builds into Steam itself. Um, I mean, really, the last thing that we want is to get something out there and not have it be as secure as possible. So that's been an adventure of our own, and I think we learn a little bit every day as we move through this process. Yeah, for sure. Um, I saw a question about flights on the Windows 10 store. That's currently not something that we've planned to do. Our flighting will be, at least for the foreseeable future, focused just on Steam. Um, and that's, I think that's due to a lot of factors, but one of which is we have done, we have more experience on the Windows store with things like Halo Wars 2 um, and Halo 5 uh, Forge product. Steam is a new area for us. It's also where we know there's a large volume of players that want this, even just evidenced by the wish list activity we saw it announced. So, we want to make crazy. sure we get Steam right. We want to lean into that ecosystem. It's new to us, so that's going to be our focus for, for flighting. Steam, the chat's just moving so fast. That's and now, <laughs> you know, let me dismiss this poll that's, that is taking up half of the screen here that I can't actually read what's going on here. I, this is like Twitch levels of chat. It's really hard to read and follow. It's moving incredibly fast. Waterfall. It is a waterfall. <laughs> I see a lot of questions about pricing. Uh, we're going to have some more information to share on that around E3, but um, the thought is that each title will be available to purchase ad hoc as, they, as it becomes available. Um, I know we have, uh, we've also talked about, for example, on Xbox One, when Reach does get added to MTC, the campaign and Firefight will be available as a premium add-on. Whereas the multiplayer content, uh, all the sort of PvP experiences, that's going to be integrated into the base offering for all of MCC. So no incremental cost or, or upsell there. And that's important to make sure that we don't sort of bifurcate the playlist population to a bunch of different groups, right? So that's right, yeah. if you own MCC on Xbox, you'll have access to the full suite of multiplayer for Halo Reach, including Theater and Forge, which is going to be pretty cool. So much stuff. It's so much stuff, right? Uh, I seem quite. I see. I thought I saw a mention of achievements or Steam achievements. Um, People are asking about Steam achievements. Steam achievements. We're hearing shout out to Sam. She's back here behind <laughs> the scenes this week. But Steam achievements is being asked about. Max, what's your guys' thought? How are you thinking about achievements for Steam specifically? Yeah, we love achievements. So uh, hopefully, where people want to get those achievements, they can get their achievements. So. Um, that's that's what we're looking for. Forge, 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 forge. I don't want to condone the spamming, but yes, forge still exists. Forge is a thing. Um, it will be in the game. I don't know if you're talking about the operating system Linux. Oh, I don't know if that's in our spec right now or not. I don't believe we have committed to that. Um, sorry about that. Custom game browser. All right, seeing a lot of questions about that, and this is. Uh, <laughs> whew, can we get a rip in the chat for nice. custom game browser? Uh, yeah, what about the custom game browser? That has been uh, in the works for a long time. We talked about that a long time ago, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. Um, it's, it's very complicated. It will still it happen. It yeah. will still happen. Actually. I think honestly, we, it's safe to say it's it's has not gone according to our original That's ideal so. plans. It's taken longer than we had hoped, and now. As the PC project has kind of moved into the forefront, I think custom game browsers just kind of gotten rolled up into this enormous project now, it's, right? It's a testament to the complexities of ga uh, the complexity of game development, if you think about it. Um, you set out, you, you have a goal, there's something that you really want to do, and then you realize how much other stuff that you have to do and where you have to prioritize things. So right now, I think the biggest priority is getting reach in a place to where we want to flight it and we want to show it at E3, and then after that, I think we'll probably spend some time talking more about that. Yeah. yeah, and meanwhile, I know the team continues to update MCC playlists every week, more or less. Yeah. Um, I don't want to spoil it right now, but I, I have seen a patch notes list for 
a pretty significant update coming to regular MCC on Xbox just in in, in June. Code so, CU34. Some C34, yes, um, the official name. You can market that, but it's to me, it's pretty. I was shocked. I honestly, I thought we were just. I know Dana and team have been doing a great job keeping listening to players' feedback and continuing to refine and evolve the playlist offerings. I did not expect a proper CU with that amount of changes and impact at the same time as all of this work also happening. So. Yeah. Not sure how you guys pull this off and how, how you find a way, but um, I think MCC players will continue to be happy as just the base game continues to improve while PC is coming to life at the same time. I think we've got maybe 17 minutes or so. Do you want to You want me to jump out? Does anybody yes, want I third can. hand to play again? Do we want to make Max play for maybe or mix it up a little bit? Like, so I know we, we, got we this. didn't negotiate yeah. that beforehand, so yeah. I'm kind of putting Max on the spot. So that's Fern probably uh, that's probably not fair. Surprisingly, in practice. So with Reach coming, what's your guys' favorite Reach campaign mission? Well, oh, don't look at me like that. <laughs> I mean, there's so a good Sam asked, what the one that makes me cry. The one that I can't play here at the office because I become an emotional wreck. Uh, it's <laughs> tough too, right? Is, is there? I assume the statute of limitations for spoilers is more or less passed, right? But then again, we also expect a lot of people that have never played this game to experience it for the first time on PC, right? Exactly. So it's, it's going to be bring interesting a whole bunch that of new we people that aren't already in the ecosystem. I mean, the tagline even back in the day was like, "From the beginning, you know the end," right? Yeah. But I don't know. Like, I've, I've struggled with that. Would it really ruin someone's experience for the first time sitting down to play Reach, new to Halo, and they are already told what the end of it is? I don't know. Well, I'm not going to be the one to spoil well, things. I'm not either. But uh, Reddit will be after me. I mean, incidentally, the reason one of the reasons we chose this mission specifically for E3 was actually it's pretty much a favorite amongst the team in yeah. terms of the missions. It's, that it's are a good. There, it's so. a. It's a mix of, it, of all the great yeah. best stuff, right? Yeah. Got great infantry combat, vehicle combat, some big set pieces. This is a solid mission. I People agree. People also want to see cat drive. <laughs> um, Do I have to? <laughs> Okay, I'll, all right, we're here. Well, so going. let's go ahead and get in front of the inevitable chat discussions. I don't think, oh. no one's done... Um, you can demonstrate skipping cutscenes, because that's oh. apparently a thing. I can do that! that. Hey! hey. hey. It right. exists! And that was real-time feedback integration right there. People yep. in chat wanted cutscenes skippable, and you just delivered. Guys, so, this uh, is why we flight. I was going to say, I don't think anyone's done significant AI recoding, for example. So if Kat gets into sh shenanigans behind the oh, wheel... Oh, she'll drive me off a cliff, for yeah, sure. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, she will. I forget Let's who I was watching. I think it was Tyler. He was playing, and he did the, like he got in the car, he got in the back of the Warthog with Kat, and Kat literally just drove him off yeah. the bridge three times in a row, ah. spawn after spawn. It's yeah, a special so ability. Let's not put that on splash damage, Andrew, Scoops, or No, Greg. not at all. <laughs> um, that is, uh, who knows, maybe at some point... Way down the road, the community can create their own mods to make Cat into a better driver. Well, I think it's, it's <laughs> also like a real issue with the way that people trust as well. I mean, you put your trust in it, and you're going to get driven off a cliff. Okay, I'm taking a look at the chat while Ferdinand's getting going here. Maybe mix it up a little bit. I'll huh? try some. Go out. Oh, I do love me some pro pipe. Ooh, mix right. it up. Get all killed right. at the very beginning. Well, I didn't mean mix it up like that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean mix up the life and death aspect. Oh, of the I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Grenade launcher is so good, though. So good. Is this in 144 hertz? I don't believe we even no. have that no. set up here in the studio. No. It is not. Yeah, it's converted into the broadcast picture, yeah. so it's going to look way better. Yeah, so again, we, we're running through. I mean, if you could see this room we have here, this has been multiple down leveled through all these different tubes and boxes. Um, if you come see us at E3, uh, we will have it running on a pretty nice machine there, and it looks even more stunning in person. Uh, I saw somebody comment on the fact that I put the keyboard on top of the uh, mouse pad. Um, as everybody can, well, not see right now, but... Uh, I think it's just because we don't have any room. Right? Yep, that's it's exactly very, why. Very I, I just pad. want the community to know that that's not my first choice of where I put the mouse pad. So, please don't flame me. <laughs> Let's do something different. I'll no, hop no. into this I'll if I don't die. Yeah, see what... All right, there you go. Oh, you're going to die. I am going to die. You're going to die. That was a bad choice. Here. Chat is moving so fast. So... I hope everyone is enjoying this uh, pro-level playthrough here. If you're just joining us, it's uh, IK Grub. Yeah. 
aka Eric Ferdinand, playing a work in progress build of our E3 demo, which is the single mission from Reach on PC. Got that nice little top down view to really show your hand and Look at that. Yes, like a hand model. A hand model. There See you where go. this goes. All right, Cat's driving. Based on chat, chat requested it. You got it. Cat is now behind the wheel. Oh, help me. Oh, Cat. Save me. Uh, <laughs> so far, better than expected. Yeah. No. Oh. no. As expected. Well, this is what the people wanted. So yeah, I'm you had stick one with job. It. I'm gonna stick you had with one it. job, Cat. I'm stick Come with on. It. The GRD helmet. Yeah. Like they put a little teddy bear anniversary. Oh, I don't know if that's. Uh, uh, yeah, I can't speak to that. Yeah, she's doing okay. You're this is the tricky shoot. part because there's uh, an endless pit click, click, of click, death click. over here. Any dates for Reach flighting before or after E3? I know I can say June. Insider flighting will begin in June. So, yes, that means it could be before or after E3. We will see. Time will tell. Also, as a reminder, after the stream, head over to Halo Waypoint. A little bit later this afternoon, you want to check out the May development update blog that Postum just put together. It's like another 6,000 word beast. <laughs> a lot more information Oof, in there about close. technical updates on the development progress. Uh, Max does a really clipping. great write-up on the new progression system. And some show and tell as well. Will this be build be available at the E3? Yes. This well, this is an older version, yes. but we will have this mission in a more updated build that includes a little bit more, a little bit more integrated PC UI, some customization settings. That is what we will be taking to E3, and we'll be inside the Microsoft Theater in the Xbox area uh, for the entire week. So if you're in the area, please stop by. In addition to a chance to maybe win a mouse pad, talk to us. I believe there's a cool reach pin that's been made that will be given away to everyone that plays, and we may have another prize or two up our sleeves. But mostly we'd just like to come and get your feedback and see what you think about the mouse and keyboard and how it's feeling. we got about 11 minutes or so here, folks. Ferdinand does have a meeting to attend to, so I do. Uh, we don't want to go all day and burn you out on the single mission that we have here, but this is just the uh, tip of the spear. Oh, -ho. I see what you did there. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> all day to say that one. It just came to me, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, what is she doing? That's like the third time that she's driven up from behind me and almost killed me. Well, you were bad-mouthing her driving uh, skills, yeah, right? Yeah, I probably had it coming. Blow this up in a stylish way. Figure out another way to do it. I gotta get this. And don't die yeah. while you're trying to do it. Will yeah, legendary. I did see a you question that, that says, right? will seasonal armor slash unlocks be, I think it said, will they be locked or will they be available anytime? I think maybe this person was saying they, like, I'm, I'm not sure what they were getting at, but there's no restriction, right? You don't miss out on content, right? You don't, you don't miss out on it. A new season will come out. A previous season's content will still be available. So you can so. always still go back and earn the reach stuff yeah, that's months right. after it's come out. Yeah, okay. What resolution is this being played at right now? 1080. Ten, good old 1080. It's a convert to 5998. So, but it's he's playing at 60 frames. All right. 1080, but we don't have the capability of streaming 4K quite yet here in this room. So it's something that we're going to have to evolve and grow into for the future. You'll just have to trust us for now, and we say it looks pretty awesome running at 60 in 4K. <coughs> I'll stand on it when it blows up. This will probably kill me, but that's okay. Hey! It's just going so fast, yeah. I was hoping for a little bit uh, oh, more died? flight time. You died again? Well, that was intentional. I was hoping for some flight time. Oh, I'll just take a drink every time you die. <laughs> well, it's going to happen at least three more times, I think. It is, right? Yep. Maybe I'll jump. Oh, no. You know, another thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, um, I did chime in on Twitter, but I believe there was some information circulated there about an E3 mm -hmm. fan Perfect. viewing experience party happening at some Microsoft stores, and as part of that, um, 
itinerary, they were advertising a chance to come play a Halo Reach Insider build. Um, just wanted to clear up some confusion there. That's actually not happening. That was posted in error. So there will not be a Halo Reach Insider build available at the Microsoft stores this weekend or next weekend. Um, I think it'd be cool to have it happen at some point down the road, maybe as an extension of fighting. Maybe they get a couple insider accounts within the store. That could be pretty cool. But um, whatever was being talked about as an E3 function, that, that was a mistake. So come see us in L.A. at E3. That'll be the, potentially the first time to get hands on, unless these guys push an insider fight out before E3. We'll have to see how that goes. Sam, are you seeing anything on chat that we're not seeing? Because it's, uh, it's it's just really hard to keep up with. I guess a, a lot of repeat questions. I think a lot of repeat questions. Too. Yeah, um, people are coming in. Yeah, we don't have the answers to everything. That yeah. is true. I'll be honest with you. Like, um, so, like somebody is asking about uh, the teams, like the match ranking settings. I think if you if you watch the go back and watch the early settings, they talk about it. Yeah, we will be using the TU for most most matchmaking modes, the TU version. Um, and when this blog comes out this afternoon, uh, Dana does a really great write-up to kind of explain how they're thinking about that and what their current plan is. And then, of course, we'll also be open to feedback and want to get this in the hands of players and, and see how it's working and make changes as needed. I think I also saw somebody, like, um, when, when the Insider program starts, they will be able to stream this, right? To stream and play, right? Um, Sam's talking off camera, sorry, I forget that not everybody might be able to hear you. I don't know if you have a mic. Oh, you do, sorry, I didn't know you were hot. Okay, <laughs> it's interesting. Um, I don't want to make a blanket statement to say insider flighting will or won't be streamable or under NDA. I think according to the terms of flighting, each flight might have its own separate rules. Um, there will become a point where we don't really have anything to hide and there's not really a way to enforce an NDA at a large scale. So. For the most part, I would expect we're going to be pretty loose about that, but it would really kind of vary by flight. And when the flight mails do start to go out to recipients, uh, it will very clearly explain what the rules of engagement are. So it's kind of on it's on you, the insider, to make sure you understand the rules and that you abide by them. So we'll just kind of have to wait and see. I think it's going to vary. No cheating. I agree. I would not like cheating. <laughs> Unless it's maybe a custom game where everybody's opted in and knows they're just playing some weird thing where everyone's agreed to let cheating be allowed, right? And that is something you guys have had to think a lot about. Like, as we think about what modding might become in the future, is just how do you, where is that okay? What's the expectation for players? Is there different things that we're going to restrict or allow in a matchmaking, which I assume we certainly would, versus customs? And just sort of making sure that the average person has the right experience online. But if you want to venture into the, the, the back alleys of MCC and experience wacky stuff, that's probably okay. Yeah, I think generally speaking, philosophically, it's about are you potentially negatively impacting someone else's experience and is there transparency about what you're getting into, yeah. right? So as we think about that, it's like what content, how do we, you engage with that content? What's the right way to put it in there? I'm saying it's not cheating if everybody agrees. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a gentleman's it's, agreement? Yeah, yeah or a that's what it is. Gentlewoman's agreement? <laughs> when will the emails go out? Well, once the flight's ready to go, the next step is to send out the emails. I probably should caveat again, too. We've been saying this quite a bit, but we have had an enormous outpouring of interest and registrations for the Halo Insider program. So thank you again to everyone. Really did blow away our expectations internally. And to be honest, part of the reason why we really felt we needed to announce this, this back when we did in March was we didn't know if it would take weeks or months to reach up to a level of insider pool people that have signed up that had valid profiles and all the required information to allow us to hit our, our population goals for flighting. Turns out that wasn't a real concern after all. I think we blew away our target in like a week and a half. So all that means is we have a ton of people, which is awesome, but it also means there's no way we can let everybody in at once. So um, expectation setting is that the flights will start small with insider groups expected to grow over time. So don't be discouraged if you don't get into the first or second flight. Just statistically speaking, you probably won't. I hate to be the, the bearer of bad news, but the, the numbers are so huge that there's just going to be a lot of people initially that are not able to get in quite yet, but we're going to work as hard as we can. and. The team's committed to trying to make sure at some point anyone that wants to be a part of a flight gets a chance to come into a flight. It just might take a little time. 
one thing I've seen, uh, they want to see, can you assassinate an enemy, Grub? <laughs> <laughs> I could <can> try. <laughs> <laughs> the feature exists, right? It does exist. Oh, oh, I could it might be able to do it. It's just a matter of, can Ferdinand pull it off? <laughs> you guys are putting me on the spot here. I mean, hey, chat wants to see it, so. You give the chat what they asked for. I'm trying. Time. It's the first roll of the social stream. Oh, that didn't work. Maybe I can jump down on try one to of the small elites up here. Yeah. Mm. Um, theoretically, yes, I absolutely could okay. assassinate. There you go, right there. There's your opportunity. Well, um, you need to turn that mouse faster, bro. Wait a second. These guys settings aren't in yet. He needs a bigger mouse pad. Wait yes. a second. Is that is that Pierre in your squad? I think it is. With the gamer pad of anger? Are you kidding me right now? Sergeant Major Pierre Hinsa, are you kidding me? Get out. <laughs> really? I just noticed that too. He's already in this build. I love that his yeah, service yeah, tag is right. anger. That is so awesome. With specialist Jason <laughs> Jones, no less. You've got a heavy hitting squad right here, Ferdinand. You got Hellsby, who I, re I remember as a bungee guy. I'm not, I do not recognize the last name down there. That's Jason Jones at the top, the one and only. And then that, that is Pierre. That's a good catch. I like that they made yeah, him a Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major Pierre. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's had a good so what I'll have to do is when I, uh, when I get out of my next meeting, I'm going to have to heckle him about the uh, limited support that he uh, provided me. You're going to file a bug that says I will. Pierre's rank is incorrectly not a private. Please, uh, please go into the build and update it. I do love that feature, though. By the way, it's really cool when the, your squad mates have. Yeah, that's fantastic. Have recognizable. Names oh, that's like that. so funny. That's I didn't know catch. Pierre did that, though. Wow. Now you know why fighting's been delayed, folks. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you pull rank. I've seen some questions about Halo Five on PC. Um, yeah, so I don't. We don't have current. There's currently no plans to bring Halo 5 to MCC. Not to say it couldn't happen down the road. As you know, or maybe don't know, we do have the Halo 5 Forge product on PC. It's a free-to-play game that is competitive multiplayer plus Forge. It was really, I believe, designed mostly as a way to allow kind of Forge power users to benefit from having the mouse and keyboard and kind of some increased fidelity there to better create content. Um, but not a lot of ongoing support was available for that title. It's, it's out there, it is playable today, but it's not being actively worked on. And um, who knows? At some point, Halo 5 could move into the MCC umbrella, but right now that's not quite a record. These people aren't getting their assassination. I don't know if it's going to happen, They're especially because we're, we're, we're pretty much at the yeah. 2.30 mark, and you've got a meeting to attend. I do. Um, Appreciate the reminder. I haven't even seen <laughs> No meeting. Oh, oh, I should have held. Are you using the right button? Yep. There's only one button for melee right now. All right, assassinate cat. No. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to wrap it up here. Um, <laughs> I know just a small taste. It's been a long wait. We do appreciate everybody stopping in today on the social stream. I want to thank Max, of course, for stopping by. Dropping all sorts of new information. Eric, great to have you on your first stream. Good being Not here. the last. We nice had a work. long road ahead, yeah. right? So yeah. I think you Lots passed your audition. We'll let the chat kind of be the judge. But <laughs> right. I think you did so okay. So I don't have to turn in my badge at the door. We didn't do the assassination yet, but we'll we'll find a way for you to make it up to the chat. Okay? He did like cat um, drive. He did like yeah, cat yeah. drive as well. So my nice job quality. on that. Also, of course, behind the screen, shout out to Michael Sternoff, one of our video folks here who always helps us pull these streams together. And Liz, of course, you know Liz. <laughs> Team Liz back in the booth. And Sam Snickerdoodles on the other side of the screen today helping to pull this together. Um, and then as a reminder, we will be at E3, so stop by if you're in town. And check out Halo Waypoint later this afternoon. We'll have our May development update blog that goes live. It's going to cover all the stuff we talked about today with a lot more detail. We're going to embed the stream, so if you missed it, tell your friends. Great chance to come check it out. Insider flighting will be starting soon. June is the month, so stay tuned. Halo Waypoint, stop by our Halo Discord server, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, all those places. You know where to find us. We'll have a lot more to say and show on the road to bring MCC to PC. So thank you very much for watching. We will talk to you soon.